Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video today, I have some more high-end Dollar Tree DIYs for you, and these are probably the ones that I have been most excited to share with you. I just absolutely love how they turned out. They're really quick, fun, and easy, and of course, inexpensive, which is the best part, but I think that they just have that really high-end kind of boho look that is super popular right now. So I love being able to incorporate this style into my home very inexpensively. So if you would like to see how I created these, keep on watching. But before we get started, if you guys are new here, I would love to have you join us by subscribing down below and make sure to turn on that notification bell. For this first DIY, I'm going to be starting with this plastic tray that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I love this one because it has a really nice size to it. I love doing Dollar Tree DIYs, but sometimes they can tend to be on the smaller side. So this one had just a really nice size to it. And then I'm also going to be using some nautical rope. So if you want to pick up this rope at the Dollar Tree, I absolutely love it and do recommend it. You're going to need about five to six of these depending on the length of it. So Dollar Tree has a couple different lengths, so you can kind of see it in the top right hand corner. And depending on what length you pick up, that's how many you will need. So about five to six should be good for this tray. Or I have another suggestion. You can pick up some nautical rope just like this from Amazon for about the same price. So for this roll here, I think it was about $10 for a hundred feet. So I will leave this one linked down below for you guys if you're interested in that. But like I said, the Dollar Tree one works just as well. So either one you go with will be perfect for this DIY. And what we are going to do is to create a rope tray. And it's super simple. You just have to put a little bit of hot glue in the center of the tray. You're gonna push your rope in, let it sit for about 30 seconds just until it's nice and secure. And then you can start to make your pinwheel effect. So I like to just go ahead pretty slowly just so it has time to dry in between. So I just kind of took my time. I put a really fun movie on to kind of help the time go by a little bit faster. And I just took my time by putting a little bit of hot glue around the swirl and then just working my rope into that hot glue. And then I just continued doing that until the entire tray was covered. When I got to the end, I just trimmed my rope and I just put a little bit of hot glue kind of on the bottom of the tray to try and hide it a little bit. And I just secured it down. And if you have any gaps, don't worry. I had a little bit of a gap for some reason. It just didn't line up perfectly on one side. So to hide this, I just cut a small piece of ribbon and just glued it down. And I just tried to hide the ends towards the bottom of the tray and you really couldn't tell. It's a pretty forgiving DIY, which is really great. And the last step is to just add some decorative handles. So for this, I just cut off two small pieces of that rope and then I just flip my tray over and just secured them down with some hot glue on either end of the tray. But I did want to mention that these are definitely just for decor purposes only. Do not use these handles to lift your tray because of course they are only glued down. So although they are pretty sturdy, you really wouldn't want to chance it. So when moving the tray, just pick it up by the sides and the handles are just for that really cute decorative effect. And here is how I decided to style my final product. So I just have a small console table and I thought it looked adorable just kind of against the wall standing up. But you could definitely use this for a tray as well. I think that would look so beautiful. So I'm kind of tempted to kind of put it out on my coffee table with just some books and maybe a candle on top. I think that would look so cute as well. For this next DIY, we are going to be making a pillow. And I absolutely love making Dollar Tree bath mat pillows. I think they were so cute. So I made one in the past before that I shared with you guys. And this one was their tan bath mat color. And you'll see the ones that I have today are a bit deeper in color. So I'm not sure if they're a new one to Dollar Tree or not, but it was definitely the first time that I had seen them. So with the one I had made previously, the stitching kind of matched the background color, whereas the ones that I have today, you can definitely see the stitching stands out a lot more because it is just a different color. 
So it's really nice. I think it kind of gives it more visual interest and a bit more textured look. So of course you can go with either one, but I thought that these would be fun to use today. And I want this pillow to be a square. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off the sides. So you'll see here, this is the bottom of the back mat. I'm going to be using this to be the outside of the pillow, but you will see where the stitching kind of changes on the back there. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off those two sides on both of the mat so I will be left with four of these strips here and I would say that they are about an inch in thickness you can just go ahead and trim those off scissors just regular scissors work great on this fabric and you should be left with four of these little pieces here and I'm going to be using three of them for kind of just decor on the outside of the pillow so the way I'm doing that is I'm just going to flip them over so the top part of the bath mat the fluffy side that is the side I want to be showing against the pillow since I will be using the bottom of the bath mat for the base of the pillow. And hot glue works beautifully on this fabric. So don't worry about stitching. You can of course, you know, stitch this on if you want to, but I honestly love to use hot glue for this. And my hot glue of choice is always these Gorilla hot glue sticks. I absolutely love these things. Regular glue works just as well, regular hot glue, but the Gorilla Glue just seems to have a bit of a stronger hold, so I will leave that link down below. I picked mine up from Amazon, and I swear by them, they are the best hot glue. So once you have those three down, you can just move your pieces to the side. We're going to get started on our tassels. So for this, I'm just going to be using this cotton twine that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And to make the tassel, you're just going to hold down the twine with your thumb and then wrap the string around your four fingers a total of about 30 to 35 times. That seems to be a good amount. And then you can just slide it off your fingers and then you're going to be cutting another piece of that string. You're going to loop it through the center of your bundle. And then you just want to do a series of knots. So I usually like to do three tight knots. Then you're just going to pull that circle really tight and you're going to cut directly across from where that top knot is. And now you can just shake your tassel out to make sure that everything looks nice and neat. And now we just have to create the head of the tassel. So to do this, I'm going to be using another piece of that twine and I'm just going to be holding a small piece of it in my thumb. And then with my other hand, I'm just going to be wrapping it around about 10 times pretty tightly. And then I'm just going to secure that with a couple of knots. And then you can just trim off those two tails that were left behind. And now you have your tassel. So you can leave it just like this, but I like to kind of make sure all of my strands are nice and even. So I just pull them straight and then give them a little trim at the end. But if you want a more boho look, you can definitely leave it the way it was. And then you just want to make seven more of these. Trust me, it goes by a lot quicker than it sounds it will. And I just put a movie on for this one as well and just kind of sat there making tassels. And before I knew it, I had eight tassels. So now to secure these to the front of the pillow, you want to face them inward because we're going to be flipping the pillow outside right later. Does that make sense? That probably doesn't make sense. I promise it will make sense when you see it in the video. So anyway, just to secure these tassels, you just want to put some hot glue and make sure they are facing inward. And you want to use those longer strings as the spot for the hot glue to secure them. And then you can just trim off those extra strings. You will not need those. And now to close my pillow up, I'm just going to be gluing the two sides and the top portion right now. And again, make sure that the bottom of the mat is facing inward since we will be flipping this pillow in a little bit. So I just ran some hot glue along the side. I just pressed those two sides together. And like I said, hot glue is like magic on this fabric it really does give it a super super strong hold you just want to take a little bit more time though in the areas where we put those decor strips because it is a bit thicker there so you might want to add a little bit more glue and give it a couple more seconds to dry and if you want to add a little bit more glue and kind of squeeze it out the top it's okay if a little bit comes out because we will not be seeing these edges in the final product
Now you should have three sides of your pillow completely glued and the bottom should still be open. So now we are going to be turning our pillow right side out. So just take a couple seconds, do this kind of carefully. You don't want to rip any of those seams and you want to make sure you're able to pull all your tassels out and not injure anything. <laughs> So this is how it should look when everything is right side out. It's looking pretty good here. So now we just have to stuff it. So for this, I'm just using polyfill. Feel free to use any old pillow you might have laying around. You can just kind of cut it open and use that polyfill. Or I like to order mine from Amazon. I will leave the one that I'm using linked down below. And now we just have to close up our pillow. So to do this, you have two options. You could fold the edges inward and have that same finished edge look that the other edges of the pillow have, or since this is the bottom and no one's going to really see it, you really don't have to fold those edges inward. You can kind of just glue them right across, which is what I'm doing here. But like I said, the choice is up to you. I figured no one's going to really see the bottom, so this is a little bit more easier than hiding those edges. And that is it. This pillow is done. I am so obsessed with how this one turned out. I really think it's so adorable. It totally has that boho chic vibe and I'm just loving it. I just think the tassels going down the sides are so cute and I love those little decor stripes. So I hope that you guys love this one as much as I do. And now we are going to get started on our last DIY. So for this last one, we are going to be making a vase that you can use two different ways. So I'm kind of excited for this one. So you're going to have to pick up these two glassware pieces from the Dollar Tree. One is in the vase department and this smaller one here is actually a candle holder, but the bottoms of these two match up perfectly. So I just had them laying around at home and was kind of playing around figuring out what I wanted to do and I just kind of noticed this by accident. So once I found that out, I knew I had to do a DIY with both of them together. So I'm just going to secure them together first. And for this, I'm going to be using a combination of this E6000 glue. I will leave this link down below. This glue is a very strong permanent hold. So I love to do this for pieces that I just really want to be stuck together forever kind of so i'm using that plus i like to use some hot glue so the combination between the two kind of gives it that really short term hold with the hot glue so it dries really quickly but the e6000 really just makes it have that permanent hold so it will be together for a very long time so once you have them glued together you want to give a little bit of time to dry and now you can leave it just like this but i kind of noticed because the bottoms have like that beveled edge that there is a little gap there. It's nothing really that noticeable, but I kind of had an idea to fill that gap in. So I'm going to be using this model magic clay by Crayola and you can pick it up at the Dollar Tree in those little packets, which are perfect for these little DIYs. And I'm just using a small piece of that model magic and I just rolled it into a long thin piece and then I folded it in half and now I'm kind of twisting it to kind of give it that braided effect. So I just took my time, kind of twisted it carefully here. You want to make sure that it is the same thickness throughout. And then if you kind of start to pull it as you twist it, you can kind of just make it a little bit longer and thinner. So once I had the proper length, I just wrapped it around that section there where the two glass pieces met and then I let this dry for 24 hours. Once it was dry, I decided to give it a quick spray paint with this Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte White Spray Paint. This is one of my favorites. If you guys are familiar with my channel, you will have seen me use this so many times. It really is just my favorite white spray paint. So this is how it turned out after two coats of that. And honestly, you can just stop here. I think this looks so good just like this, but I love to give you guys some options. So of course, if you're going for a more modern look, I would say leave it just like this, but I really like that kind of boho look. So I'm going to be adding a layer of baking soda paint to kind of give it a little bit more texture. So I just put some white acrylic paint in a cup. I added in a little scoop of some baking soda, which I picked up at the Dollar Tree, mixed it together, and I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a really light coat of this baking soda paint just to kind of give it a bit more of a textured pottery look. 
here is how it turned out after I let that one coat dry. So I didn't go too heavy with this. I just wanted a little bit more of that textured look. So like I said, this is totally optional. So if you kind of really like this look like I do, I would definitely say go ahead and do that baking soda paint. But if not, it looks really great just spray painted. And I wanted to give you another option to just kind of add a little bit more to it, kind of like an accent piece. So I'm just taking some Dollar Tree twine and I'm going to be making two tassels. So this is pretty similar to how I made the tassels for the pillow, but a little bit different. So after I wrapped it around my fingers, I'm going to be taking a small piece and just putting it right through that loop and doing exactly what I did before, I'm cutting across, but this time I'm going to be taking that knot and I'm going to be hiding it in the center of the head of the tassel. So this is the only difference from the tassels that we made earlier on. So once you hide the head of the tassel, you can just take some more twine, wrap it around a few times, knot it, and then trim off those edges. And then you can just pull the rest of the tassel nice and straight and trim it off to make sure it looks neat. Then you can just repeat the same process so you will have two tassels and now I'm just going to be taking another piece of that twine so the piece I cut here is about three feet but it doesn't have to be exactly three feet and I'm just going to be pushing it through the head of that tassel and just making a couple knots up top and then I am going to just be trimming off that one tail there and then I'm going to secure the other tassel to the other end of that string. Now to add it to our vase, this is going to be something that is completely removable. So I'm just going to take it around and I'm going to just wrap it around the vase a couple times so it's kind of easier to see than it is to explain. And then once I only had a little bit left of my rope after I wrapped it around, I just kind of looped it under it and kind of pulled it tight and just let them hang loose. So I thought that this looked really cute, kind of boho-ish, really went with our tray that we made. And since the top part of this vase is really shallow, it's great to kind of use it as kind of like a trinket tray if that makes sense. So I just took some wood beads that I had here and I just kind of used them to kind of just drape off the side and I thought that that was a really cute look. But the second way we can use this vase is as an actual vase. So if you flip it around, you'll see that the inside here, I left completely bare. So it's still glass in there. So you can use this for real flowers or my favorite is faux flowers since they last forever. So I just have some faux flowers here. And like I said, you can totally use real flowers with this since it actually is still glass on the inside or just add some faux flowers and you have yourself a very versatile vase. So I really hope that you guys love these DIYs. I thought that they were so much fun to create for you and I had so much fun doing it. And I really, really, really want to just thank everyone for subscribing. We have been growing here and it just means so much to me. And if you're not subscribed yet, please do think about joining us. You can subscribe by clicking my picture right here and make sure to check out this video for some more crafting fun.